Once again, I find myself on the wrong side of prevailing opinion, uh, but this time it's not about COVID, uh, but Ukraine, uh, which is why I've been quiet over the last few weeks. I, I needed the time to fully understand what's taking place there, and perhaps more importantly, uh, why it's taking place. I knew very little about Ukraine, uh, its history, uh, its ties with Russia, uh, or anything about the geopolitical situation in general uh, regarding the collapse of the uh, Soviet Union in 1991 and the rise of the European Union. The one thing I did know, though, uh, was that the entire Western media uh, was once again acting in lockstep propaganda, uh, just as they did over COVID-19. And rather than impartially reporting facts uh, about Ukraine, they're seeking instead to, to both create public opinion and to inflame uh, public opinion. Western media is it's captured and it, it exists really just as the propaganda arm of the global establishments, uh, otherwise known as the New World Order. And the power they hold over us uh, via coercive propaganda from the captured mainstream media is near total. And we see the result of this all around us. You know, I stand with Ukraine is the current mantra. Uh, Putin must be destroyed. Putin is Satan incarnate and Zelensky is a saint. That's what we're told. Any other thought... Any other thought at all is now forbidden, and any public questioning of this one-sided propaganda war is met with an anger so irrational, uh, so hateful, so murderous, uh, it shows all the signs of mass hysteria in the exact same way people were herded into mass hysteria about COVID-19. And I really don't see how anyone uh, with an open, logical mind, can read the lurid mainstream media articles and uh, television uh, reports and not realise uh, with a 100% certainty that regardless of the truth behind the headlines, they are very definitely being mentally manipulated, mentally conditioned to think a certain way. And worse than this, they're being conditioned to hate to really hate. I've seen nothing like it in my life. I can only really compare it to the two-minute hate sessions organised by the uh, ruling political party in George Orwell's 1984. Now, just to make my position clear here, I am very much an anti-communist, an anti-violence, anti-war, anti-authoritarian sort of a chap. I think Putin is a political gangster, and I hold no admiration for him whatsoever. Uh, do I think he's capable of great evil? Well, of course he's capable of great evil, but he's no different in this regard to any other number of recent and uh, existing Western uh, political leaders who invaded numerous countries around the world over the last few decades and killed vast numbers of people, uh, the majority of them non-military innocents. And my interest in Putin's war has nothing to do with whether he is a nice man or an evil man. It rests solely on did he have valid geopolitical concerns about Ukraine and could those concerns have been resolved via diplomatic discussions with the global power brokers in America and the European Union? And I believe the answer to that question is no. In fact, I don't believe the global power brokers uh, wanted peace at all. They wanted war, and they did everything they could to ensure war. I think they view Putin as an obstacle to their New World Order agenda, and they want him gone, uh, just as they wanted Donald Trump gone. But unlike Trump, Putin cannot be simply disappeared via electoral corruption. So... How then to get rid of him? Uh, the answer, I think, is to provoke him into a unwinnable war and then muster the huge power of the corrupt Western media to unite the population into such a frenzied state of two-minute hate hysteria that they'll gladly back their governments 
uh, direct involvement in the war, even if it means initiating World War III. And I see only today the Czech government intends to deliver T-72 tanks uh, to Zelensky. And Czechia is part of NATO, of course, and NATO involvement in a war against Russia really could spiral into World War III. There's another war going on at the moment in Yemen, and between 2014 to the beginning of this year, uh, some quarter of a million children have been killed as a direct or indirect consequence of fighting there. And the Saudi-led coalition bombs civilian areas, and Britain, America and Canada train and supply the Saudi war machine. Yet you will find no Yemeni flags on people's Twitter bios, uh, no saint-like Yemeni politicians beamed into UN assemblies or Grammy Awards nights, and no virtue-signalling celebrities stating they stand with Yemen. Why not? Why not? How can such a glaring double standard exist, uh, especially when our own governments are complicit in the murder of Yemeni children? And the answer is because people have not been told what to think or how to think about the war in Yemen. They have about Ukraine. Everyone needs to bear this in mind because we are clearly being told what to think and how to think about Ukraine, Putin, Zelensky. A huge global drive is underway to ensure we think correctly. Now, truth and honesty may well play no part in this drive at all. If the lies benefit Zelensky and go against uh, Putin, then lies will be told, possibly up to and including blatant lies about atrocities committed. And people seriously need to ask just why this, uh, this might be. And it seems, it, it seems clear to me we are being prepared for something much bigger than a, a, a geopolitical conflict in a faraway country between people of whom we know next to nothing, to paraphrase Chamberlain.